Well, the way, the way it works is that uh, the reason why I'm still talking even about this stuff is because agroecology creates what we call spaces of hope. We, we create lighthouses. So there are hundreds of communities in Latin America that are doing agroecology, that are conserving the environment, that they're improving their livelihoods, and they're creating that dialogue with nature in a successful way. So there are hundreds of those experiences happening already. Now, whether the collection of those experiences is going to lead to major change, I don't know. But at least we see that it's possible to have change at the local level, despite the, sh the shit that is happening, you know, uh, at the world level, at the, at the government level. And so, so there's a lot of experiences like that, you know, not only in agriculture, in health, in, in education. There are cooperatives. There's uh, health cooperatives. Uh, there are uh, uh, communal kitchens. There's all kinds of things that are happening where people are making, you know, uh, new arrangements, new economic arrangements. Much, much more solidarious, you know, based on solidarity and, 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 and compassion and so on and so on. So that, that keeps me going because every time I go to these farms and I see these communities doing that, you know, communities that I was telling you in Colombia, you know, in the middle of the violence, that those kids stay there, not only they stay there, they went back to school, they got a PhD, they're back in their communities. That, that's unprecedented, you know, mm -hmm. that's an, an, amazing. That's, and, and, and so these things give you hope. And so hopefully, the reproduction of these small cases through farmer to farmer interaction and so on are gonna spread to the point that they're gonna undermine you know the, the, yeah. the dominant system, the, the hegemonic system. It's the question of how fast can they do it. With the internet it's well uh, it's that hopeful. way and so it, this is where the role of consumers come in. You know, because we're the massive uh, the masses. I mean seventy percent of world population is gonna live in cities in twenty thirty. So the consumers have to understand that eating is a political act and as well as an ecological act. But then you're working through capitalism because consuming well, but is then, an act. But then, but then you can create laws and, and, uh, and you can create, uh, like in Brazil or in other countries, where you create bypasses, you know, where, for example, okay, Marine County is going to buy all the food from the small farmers, you know, and with that they're going to feed the schools and the hospitals. Well, that, 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 if that comes through, through, through government rules then that can undermine, you know, the dominance of capitalism because you're taking them out of the capitalist uh, system. But you put in the state in charge. Well, the state is us. You know, that's supposed to be the, 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 in democracy that they, they should be representing us. So you put the governments in power that are going to represent you, like they have done in many countries. What happens is that they, they have undermined that, you know. I come from Chile, you know, where Allende was elected by us. He was a socialist. He did land reform. He took away the, the, the mines from the, from the corporations and they killed him three years later when a coup that was financed by the CIA. But